So last night was possibly the last Democratic Party primary debate of this election cycle. And my overall breakdown isn't going to be as long as they usually are, because I think it makes more sense, since this is a one-on-one -on -one debate, to talk more about individual instances of like what happened specific moments um with that being said i do want to give you an overall breakdown of what i think happened and really going into this debate we needed the stars to align we needed two very specific things to happen first of all we needed bernie sanders to have a really solid performance and second of all we needed the public to see that Joe Biden is incapable of standing up for himself in a one-on-one -on -one debate scenario against Donald Trump. We needed people to see that Joe Biden is struggling to collect his thoughts. He's incoherent oftentimes, right? However, we uh, did not get that. Uh, Bernie Sanders certainly performed very well, but Joe Biden was not incoherent. Joe Biden was uh, competent, seemingly. He appeared decisive. He didn't seem to struggle to collect his thoughts. The usual Joe Biden was not at this debate. He brought it, and because of that, it's really difficult for me to imagine a situation to where this debate really creates this sort of seismic shift in the way that the, you know, the Bloomberg debate changed the dynamic of that race. It took him from being a front runner and basically eliminated him. I, I just, I can't imagine that happening because of this debate. Now, of course, putting aside Joe Biden's performance, he lied repeatedly. Um, he was condescending. Bernie Sanders, I think, backed him into a corner. But what voters were really looking for at this debate, I think, is uh, whether or not he could hold his own against Donald Trump. And if you're just basing it off of that alone, I don't think that this debate is going to have much of a, an effect on the overall race. And that's really unfortunate um, because we all we all know that Joe Biden, I mean, he's in cognitive decline. I think that that is undeniable at this point. But at this debate, he did not show evidence of that. And because of that, I don't think that this debate is really going to change the momentum that is clearly, you know, in in his direction. I don't. Um, now, I will be getting to very specific portions in different videos, but I do want to kind of bring up um, some things that really stood out to me in, in this overall breakdown. Um, Joe Biden, throughout the entirety of the night, he he lied the entire time. Voters aren't going to be savvy enough to know whether or not he's telling the truth or not. Certainly, Bernie Sanders is more trustworthy overall, hence why he's the most popular politician in America. But when Joe Biden lies, he does so like Trump with confidence to where you kind of just you take his word at it. Right. And there was a moment in the debate where um, Biden looked really strong when taking on Bernie Sanders and this bogus line that, you know, he likes praising dictators. I mean, Joe Biden has done the same exact thing. He praised, you know, Xi Jinping of China. He praised, uh, I think it was Hosni, Hosni Mubarak in Egypt. Like, he and his administration, him and Obama, sold weapons to Saudi Arabia. So, I mean, th this talk of Bernie just loves dictators, it's bogus. It's done as a ploy to link him to Donald Trump. And since Democratic Party voters have this visceral reaction to Donald Trump, Anyone who's associated with Donald Trump or any, you know, like him in any way, shape or form, that's going to be a major turnoff. And, you know, the media knows this. Joe Biden knew this. And I'm worried that that portion hurt Bernie Sanders even further. He claimed that his climate change plan is uh, ambitious enough to take on climate change, which is laughable. I mean, look at his Greenpeace record. What is it, a D? I mean, it, it's just it's awful. Um, he claimed that he is now in favor of progressive policies that essentially undo the damage that his bills caused. For example, he pushed the bankruptcy bill, which was incredibly disastrous, but now he's embracing Elizabeth Warren's plan to undo the damage caused by his bill. So I just think that like judging this from the standpoint of an average consumer of politics who isn't like in deep like you and I are, where we know all of these lies, I think that Joe Biden came across as someone who looks prepared and ready to take on Donald Trump. And that sucks for us, right? Now, I'm really, really genuinely hoping that voters saw through Joe Biden and, you know, his disingenuous nature 
with the way that he talked about some of these policies. And I want to play a clip for you about Medicare for all. He he literally with a straight face claimed that Medicare for all, you know, that and coronavirus, COVID-19, they're not related. So why are we even bringing up Medicare for all when we're talking about coronavirus? And this is a point in the debate where if there was any opportunity for Bernie Sanders to stand out, I think this was the moment right here. And it was at the very beginning, which is important because, I mean, Joe Biden looked like a clown. Take a look at what he says here. What is it that we need? Listen to the experts. What do we need? And with all due respect to Medicare for all, you have a single payer system in Italy. It doesn't work there. It has nothing to do with Medicare for all. That would not solve the problem at all. We can take care of that right now by making sure that no one has to pay for treatment, period, because of the crisis. No one has to pay for whatever drugs are needed, period, because of the crisis. No one has to pay for hospitalization because of the crisis, period. That is a national emergency, and that's how it's handled. It is not working in Italy right now, and well, they have a single-payer system. Well, <laughs> now, with regard to what else I would do. Well, first of all, uh, the dysfunctionality of the current health care system is obviously apparent. Uh, as I said earlier, there are people who hesitate to go to the doctor. You're going to have a maze of regulations. Well, if this is my income, if that's my income, can I get it? Can I not get it? Clearly, we are not prepared, and Trump only exacerbates the crisis. When we spend twice as much per capita on health care as any other nation, one might expect that we would have enough doctors all over this country. One might expect that we would have affordable prescription drugs. One might expect that we are preparing effectively for a pandemic, that we were ready with the ventilators, with the ICUs, with the test kits that we need. We are not. And bottom line here is in terms of Medicare for all, despite what the vice president is saying, what the experts tell us is that one of the reasons that we are unprepared and have been unprepared is we don't have a system. We got thousands of private insurance plans. That is not a system that is prepared to provide health care to all people. In a good year, without the epidemic, we're losing up to 60,000 people who die every year because they don't get to a doctor on time. And clearly, this crisis is only making a bad situation worse. I mean, to suggest that having a single pair wouldn't help... It's it's literally an idiotic thing to say. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. Yes, Italy has a single payer system and they are doing uh, really bad right now. But what I was hoping Bernie Sanders would bring up is what would happen if Italy didn't have a single payer system? How much worse would this be in Italy? Like, you don't understand that a single payer system, that isn't going to be the end all be all in solving a pandemic. You need other things in place, the infrastructure, the readiness to deal with these types of things. But a single payer, would that help with this situation? Of course it would. Because we have a situation where our healthcare system is broken to where if you have health insurance, you may not be able to go to the doctor because you can't afford the copay, right? So, I mean, the fact that he said this with a straight face, it's so disingenuous that I think, I hope that voters see through that. Now, Bernie Sanders brought up a point that like on a good year, when we don't have a global pandemic that we're dealing with, more than 60,000 people die due to a lack of health coverage. And that's probably a conservative estimate because there are people who have health insurance, but they are underinsured, meaning that if they go to a doctor and their doctor says they need a specific procedure done, but their insurance won't cover that, and they don't get that procedure, they end up dying. So on a good year, lots of people die in this country, a good year. So that was a really powerful point. And I think that that instance may have been the only real instance where Joe Biden was damaged throughout his lives. I mean, there are other moments where Joe Biden was caught, but if like there was a moment in particular where Joe Biden and his confidence was like, putting up this illusion of him being ready and prepared to take on Donald Trump. I think that voters are smart enough to see through that in particular because it was so disingenuous and nonsensical, quite frankly, because if you're trying to tell us that having a single payer universal healthcare system wouldn't be beneficial in times like this, like, I don't know who would believe that. You'd have to be a moron to believe that. And throughout this debate, you just, you really saw two worldviews that are just diametrically opposed because Biden now is starting to slowly but surely pivot. He wants it to seem as if 
He's open to progressive policy ideas, but you just see Bernie has a different worldview than Joe Biden because he thinks through all of the ways that people are impacted, not just in terms of like the need for healthcare during times where we have this global pandemic, COVID-19, but how it affects people who are in quarantine and they can't go out to get groceries, elderly people. I mean, take a look. And I think one of the things that we want to remember here is that we got a lot of elderly people in this country who are told, stay home, don't leave your house. Who's going to get food to them? How do we get food to them? You got schools all over this country now being shut down. Okay? How are we going to make sure that the kids do well in this crisis, not become traumatized? What do we do about the parents now who have to stay home with the kids and can't go to work? So I think what bottom line here is that in this crisis, we have got to start paying attention to the most vulnerable. That includes people who are in prison right now people who are in homeless shelters right now. What about the half a million people who are homeless tonight? Who's going to respond to them? I mean, that is so important. He's bringing up people who politicians don't generally view as a constituency. Like homeless people don't usually vote. People in prisons can't vote. So no other politician views them as a constituency. Bernie has nothing to gain by, you know, citing these people need to be taken care of during times of pandemics. He just did it because that's what he believes in his heart. So I think that one thing that was clear, like putting aside the fake confidence that Joe Biden was trying to, you know, um, showcase, I think that you're going to see that Bernie Sanders just has a different philosophy on the world in comparison with Joe Biden. But with that being said, I just feel like because Joe Biden was articulate and eloquent, dare I say, at times, because he was so confident with his lies, I think that the average person may believe him in instances. Sure, there were moments where Bernie Sanders really had him on the ropes with regard to Social Security, for example, and super PACs, and we'll talk about that uh, in a separate segment. But, I mean, he, he had excuses for himself that I think the average voter is going to buy. Like, for example, he talked about the Hyde Amendment when Bernie Sanders brought that up. And he said, well, look, a lot of people in Congress voted for the Hyde Amendment because it was locked in with other bills. Now, that is something that, it, you know, he's giving himself plausible deniability. It's a wh horrible excuse. But if you're just someone who's watching TV and you're trying to decide who's the best person to take on Donald Trump and you don't know any better, and, you know, a politician brings up this excuse... I think largely people will buy it. Now, the same thing is true for Hillary Clinton. She had a lot of excuses for her horrible votes and decision making. And I think that, you know, they thought people, you know, voters, just casual observers of politics thought, oh, well, she has a good enough excuse. So, you know, um, first of all, she just has to make it through a primary and there's no way a Republican would bring this up. But Donald Trump did bring that up and all of her excuses fell flat. And I'm, I'm worried that the same thing is going to happen with Joe Biden. So overall, just to kind of wrap all of this up, I was disappointed with this debate. And when it comes to who's the winner, I'm going to have to this is a draw to me. I don't think there was any definitive winner. You can make the case that Bernie Sanders by far had the best performance, objectively speaking, and I would agree with that. But also, on another hand, you can make the case that Joe Biden is the de facto winner because of what Bernie Sanders needed to accomplish. His task here was just, it was gigantic, right? He had to have not just a phenomenal debate performance, but Joe Biden had to have a bad debate performance, something that Bernie Sanders couldn't necessarily control. Bernie can't control if Joe Biden is going to seem as if, you know, he can't collect his thoughts during a debate. That's something he can't control. So I don't know what Joe Biden's staffers did to help him prepare, but he came more prepared than ever. And because I don't think that this debate did enough to move the needle, um, it... <laughs> nothing is going to change. And that is really disappointing. Now, I'm not going to say, oh, well, since we didn't have the debate that we were hoping for, this election is over because things are changing very rapidly in the United States of America, right? We have a global pandemic currently, and this is making a lot of people reassess their philosophy on politics more generally speaking. You have people like Ben Shapiro all of a sudden crying for government intervention. Are these COVID-19 tests going to be widely available? You have Mitt Romney floating the idea of a universal basic income temporarily. I mean, people's views on the world change when they're faced with these types of crises. You kind of reassess things. So maybe that could help Bernie Sanders because obviously everything, everything that Bernie Sanders has been promoting in his entire career has been something that would benefit us more so than we are and make us more prepared to deal with these types of issues. So 
if anything is going to give us a chance, maybe it's this crisis. Maybe that's the only light at the end of the tunnel. But again, I still think it's a long shot. And I'm not going to say that this election is over. But in terms of us hoping that the debate would change this race fundamentally, I just don't think that this debate did that. And it's not because Bernie Sanders, you know, wasn't um, a good debater tonight. I think that there are criticisms of his performance. I would say that he needed to be more aggressive, but just in terms of sheer skill, he he backed Joe Biden into a corner when it comes to Social Security, got him to admit that he did want to cut Social Security, got him to basically admit that his smear of Bernie Sanders having super PACs was nonsense because Joe Biden said, you want me to name them? And Bernie said, yes, name my super PACs, and he wouldn't do it. So Bernie did a good job in this debate. It's just that Joe Biden, he needed to show voters um, we needed him to show voters his true colors, that he's not prepared, that he's inarticulate, that he can't he can't hold his own in a debate stage. But if you're watching this and you're just an average consumer of politics, I don't think that people got that impression if they're paying attention, right? So overall, not the performance uh, or the outcome, rather, that I was looking for. Nonetheless, we'll talk about specifics because that's not to say that this debate was all bad because Bernie, um, like I alluded to, he had some really just phenomenal moments that exposes Joe Biden's weaknesses. And we'll talk about them um, coming up.